John Coltrane's Mr. PC is a fantastic jazz standard for beginners and for intermediate jazz players to get to grips with some basic soloing ideas and get used to playing over chord changes. A 12 bar minor blues ripe for you to unleash everything you've got over those changes. With simple chord changes and no changes in key, this is a great standard for you to develop your ideas over. In this video lesson, I'm gonna share with you four different levels for soloing over this song from beginner ideas with one scale up to more advanced scales and arpeggio substitutions. If you don't know the course of this song, then that's where you need to start. And I did that in my last video. If you check the card up there or the description below, you can check out that video where I go through the chord changes with suggested voicings and also talk about the harmony. Now over to the lesson. So the first scale I would suggest you start with is the minor blue scale. So the C minor blue scale. So that contains the following notes. So C, E flat, F, G flat, G, a flat, B flat. That'd be in one octave. Try and find it in one octave on different places on the guitar. Like so. Get used to it in those one octave positions, then you can link them together. Let's just try then see what that scale sounds like over the top of the chord changes. So that was just sort of creating some basic ideas with this scale. You could start by just playing the scale in time. I was, what I was doing there was just playing an eighth notes and just continuously playing the scale. up and down. Take a small bit of it. I did at one point, I think I went. It's kind of a bluesy repeating idea. Now, you're going to want to make sure that you actually land on certain notes at certain times to make it follow the chords, otherwise it will sound a little bit disconnected. Now, to do that, you need to know what notes are in the chords and what notes in the scale and where they sit together. So if we take those four chords in the tune, C minus seven, we compare it to the scale. So let's compare C minor seven with the scale. So the scale, if we remind ourselves, was C, E flat, F, G flat, G, B flat, C. Now this chord, C minor seven, contains C, E flat, G, and B flat. So that scale contains all of the notes in that chord. So you can find those. So when it's C minor seven, try and hit a C, or an E flat, a G, or a B flat. Some will sound stronger than others, but you know, just go for the root to start with is fine. Then the F minor 7 chord, we've got some of the notes in this chord. So this chord contains F, A flat, C and E flat. So it can, the scale contains F, the root. We don't have A flat, we're missing that note. We've got C and E flat, so we've got the root, the fifth and the seventh. So you could try targeting F, C or E flat over the F chord. When we hit the A flat chord, that chord contains A flat, C, E flat, a G flat. So we haven't got an A flat, but we've got a C, an E flat, and a G flat. The G7, which is G, B, D, F. We've got a G, we haven't got a B, we haven't got a D, but we have got an F, so we've just got the G and the F. So this time what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna play over the changes, but I'm gonna try targeting the notes. Uh, I'm gonna start with just the roots where possible. So when it's C, I'm gonna land on a C. When it's F, I'm gonna land on F. When it's A flat, I could go with maybe the G flat. And when it's the G, I could go maybe with the F. And then back to the C. Let's hear what that sounds like. So C, that's the root. F, that's the root. Back to C. Now I'm gonna go G flat, which is the seventh of the A flat. F, which is the seventh of the G. Back to root. Now as you can hear there, that followed the harmony. Now what you could then do is play that note and then do something with the scale. But you've got to make sure that when the chords changes you still find those target notes. So that would sound like so. It 
so, so as you could hear there, that the, the what I was playing followed the harmony of the chords. It's all very basic, but it's a good way to get started. So our first method is using C minor blues over all of it, but trying to target notes where possible. Option two is to use a blues scale for every chord. So for C minor, use C blues. For F blues, use F for the F minor, sorry, use F blues. For the A flat, we've got A flat blues, and for G7, we've got G blues. Back to C, C minor blues. Let's hear what that sounds like. So we're using the minor blues for each chord. So C minor blues, F minor blues, A flat blues, and G blues. Four scales, but the same scale type. And you can just use the same shape like I just put on the screen and just keep with that. C blues. F blues. C blues. A flat. G. C. So that's a little bit richer harmonically. We're following the chords probably a little bit closer because we've got more of the notes available to us from the chords. So I like that approach. You know, you can mix and match, obviously. You, you can keep with C minor and then maybe just for that A flat and G7 use the, the blue scales for those respective ones but uh, that's a good little way to try it and it's just the same scale type so it's not like some standards where you might have four or five different modes going going on it is just the minor blue scale you know when it's a C you got that when it's F you've got this when it's A flat you got G that's C and it's funny in the tension, and obviously the tension in the blues scale is that. That flat five. Adding in slides, pull-offs, you know, those sort of things, just to embellish it as well, make things stand out. Benefits of those four scales, we're able to follow the harmony more closely because of more notes available to us to actually fit the chords. Uh, the only thing with that comes with your ability to follow the chords as they're changing. So for that, you really have to know the chord structure inside out and know when it's changing. Otherwise, you're soloing and you're like, oh, I'm lost. I don't know where I am. Oh, the F minor seven's come and I've, you know, not been aware of it. You have to think, you know, in that first line, four bars of C minor seven, you're always thinking about what's coming next. Whilst you're playing what you're playing, you're trying to think about where things are moving to, where this song is shifting to. And with this form of a 12 bar blues, it's a relatively easy place to do it. Now, this song is often played up tempo. I'm doing it a little bit under tempo here so you can hear the ideas more clearly. Practice it slowly, practice it as a slow blues to start with and then work up to tempo. So option one was just a C minor blues scale. Option two was the blues scale for every chord. Option three is seven note scales. So we're gonna get richer harmony here. Now for the C minor seven and the F minor seven, I like Dorian. There are other options, but let's just go with that today. So C Dorian being, and you could heard that note stood out. That's the sixth of it. So we've got C, D, flat F G A B flat C root second minor third perfect fourth perfect fifth that major six flat seven octave let's do two octaves though so that's, 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 there's a lot more going on there we've got we've got all our chord tones plus that note for character um, when we change to F minor seven, we do F Dorian, which is F G A flat B flat C D E flat F. Same construction as the C Dorian, and its uh, two octave position would be. For the other two chords, we're going to use Lydian dominant for the A flat seven. Which is a Lydian scale with a flat seven. So remembering that a Lydian scale has that sharp four sound, so that note. So that is A flat, B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G flat, A flat. So it's got all the notes you need um, to create the dominant seventh sound. Plus it's got that sharp four which gives it some character. And for the G7 we're going to use Trusty old favourite, Mixolydian flat two flat six, which sounds a lot more complicated than it is. It's actually the C harmonic minor scale, but starting from a G. 
um, and he goes G, A, A flat, B, C, D, E flat, F, G. I like this because it contains E flat, which is the minor third. If you try to use G mixolydian here, it would sound way too happy. And a mixolydian is obviously the natural choice for a G7, but in a minor key, like, and particularly this song, I just don't feel it. It would work so well. That E would just stands out like a sore thumb, you know, in this context. So the mixolydian flat two flat six, which is what it says, is a mixolydian scale, but the, the second is flattened. So you'd normally have an A, but we have an A flat in this case. You'd normally have an E, but we have an E because the six has been flattened. So it's a mixolydian scale, but you just flatten the second and flatten the six. same notes as and it's the same notes as C harmonic minor if that's easier for you to sort of find it on the guitar and relate it to something so let's try just playing those scales I'm just going to play them in a very boring way just so you can hear them and you can start like this there's nothing wrong with starting like this you can work your way up to phrasing and creating music with it but to start off with can you find those scales as the chords change like this scale exercise you could obviously do it slower like I said work at a lower tempo but that was using C Dorian over C minor 7, F Dorian over F minor 7, A flat Lydian dominant and then G mixed Lydian flat 2 flat 6 so four scales that will give you a little bit more to play with. <laughs> fourth way, uh, and this isn't really about playing over the whole song, this is about when you have got four bars of the same chord and how you can add more interest by superimposing other chord sounds. Now you can do this with arpeggio substitutions and you can do this by going a bit outside. So I'm going to loop the chords four bars of C minor 7 and talk through some possibilities you could do over the top of that to add interest. So you could play the chords of the key. So we're in C minor, so you can go C minor 7, D, D minor 7 flat 5, E flat major 7, F minor 7, G minor 7, A flat major 7, B flat 7, back to C. Picking maybe just some of them, let's just go C minor 7 to D minor 7 flat 5. Like that. Uh, e flat major 7. Some sound better than others. And uh, that E flat major 7 creates a minor 9 sound because of the notes in it. I really like that. Then going into some sort of phrasing maybe, or combine C minor 7, E flat major 7. That sort of thing. Find the ones which work well. Other things you can do in terms of playing other things over it is sort of playing a semitone away, like go C minor, C sharp minor, C minor, so like... Um, So I'm doing triad, C minor, C sharp minor triad, back to C minor, then some blue scale stuff. Or B minor, go down, go C minor, B minor, C minor. Or about C sharp minor, B minor, C minor, like... And it sounds strong because it, it finishes on the strong sound. So some ideas there to create tension. Um, you could imply the 5 chord, um, so I'm going thinking C minor, G7, C, so you get that sort of movement there. Just pause it a second. Another chord you could imply in bar 4 is C7, and that is because it's the dominant of F minor, so you could be... So 
I did there is I stuck in C minor and then bar four when I went. That was a C7 arpeggio descending, which would land me nicely for the F minor seven. It's not there, the rhythm section, I'm not playing it, but God, does it propel us to F minor. So that's another thing you, you could do. So those are my four levels for soloing over Mr. PC. Now, start with the easiest one first and then work your way up. It's important to fully explore one idea before you move on to the next. Don't forget when you're listening to a jazz musician, you're listening to layer and layer and layer upon learning different concepts, different things they've picked up from different people. And in the same way, the ideas that you might pick up from this, explore maybe one fully before you move on to the next, and then try and combine those with different ideas. There's a lot to be said for restricting yourself to one approach to ensure that you've fully understood it and to actually make sure that you can apply it in a real time sort of live situation when you're either playing with someone else or jamming over a track. If you've enjoyed today's lesson, then be sure to check out my playlist of lessons in which I share my thoughts on how to solo over different jazz standards. Uh, I'll put a card up there and a link in the description. If you have any jazz standards that you'd like me to cover, then leave me a comment below. Anyway, I will see you either next Wednesday or Saturday. I release videos on those days now. Uh, see you next time. Take care.